First thing I do is I think of a scene and I plan out what I want to happen. It can really be anything, but in my case, I'm going to be doing like more of a hill kind of thing. And before we even begin to work on the background, we're going to establish some lighting. Now, what I like to do is have a uh, half background brightness glow borders on the sides and on the top or bottom, I do a blending glow border. Sometimes to spice things up, I'll have two different sets of glow borders that are slightly rotated and have different hues. I just do this because it allows one side to be a little cooler and one side to be a little warmer. It's something that you don't really notice, but it's just a fun thing that I like to do. Now we actually start to make the background. I use really large scaled up rock corner pieces because they have this really organic shape to them. Just kind of arrange them in a way that looks the most natural to you. Don't have a lot of like really janky bits. <laughs> you want it to kind of flow in the way that you think represents what you want. To start filling in a lot of the gap at the bottom, I like to use scaled up circle pieces. I rotate them 45 degrees, have them at the same like brightness and whatever. Even if you make them like a little too big or whatever, it doesn't really matter because they also have that nice like grainy feel to it. And I like the grainy uh, feel that a lot of these scaled up pieces have. It kind of simulates glow without using like a million glow pieces, which is pretty nice. Anyway, to fill up the rest of the bottom, I just use a lot of large squares. Depending on how much of the screen this fills up, you might need a lot of squares or you might need very few. Now we move on to air decoration. I just ton of low opacity things that either complement or contrast with a background. Just choose what you think works. I like to add a lot of god rays. Sometimes I'll do a lot of the uh, pulsing kind of like uh, air decoration bits. I like to add a lot of glow into mine. You can do like this fun thing where you have a bunch of uh, low opacity glow that has a big hue shift on it to create this like splotch of just like color. That, that's always a fun thing to add. Or you can just kind of go wild and do whatever you want, really. Now you want to add a ton of parallax. Have nothing move at the same rate as another object because this breathes so much life into a part and it takes very little effort. Okay, the way parallax works is that, let's say from the like player's perspective, stuff very far away should be moving at a very slow rate, but stuff very close to you should be moving at a pretty fast rate. Finally, you can start to add pulses that you think represents the song. There's these really long pulses that I feel like I wanted to have a lot of fade out with, and I think that worked like really well in my case. Uh, something else that you can do with pulses is that you can have a blending screen pulse at different intervals than what the main like background pulse or whatever is going at, because then you can add a lot of variety into what you're pulsing, and then you can have all these better color combinations. Because if you're always pulsing the background, it's either gonna seem like it really copy pasted, or it's just gonna seem really lazy. And you know, that isn't exactly what you want to do. Anyway, that's that's kind of all the advice I have. So, um, uh, see ya. <laughs>